the landscape to create custom GPTs is heating up. Of course, we had OpenAI create their GPT store, and now we have an entirely new player in the field, and that is that Hugging Faces has just launched an open source rival to OpenAI's GPT store. This is an area I'm obviously very interested in. For those that know, as I'm building AI Box, which is its own no-code AI app builder and marketplace we've been working on for a year, we're looking to launch soon. If you're interested in investing in AI Box, you can go to republic.com slash AI dash box. We only have around 20 days left in our crowdfunding campaign. We've raised $300,000. And once this is over, the campaign will be closed. If you're interested in investing, you can go there. But today, let's talk about what every what is involved in this new Hugging Faces tool, um, and where I think this is going for the AI field in the future. So let's get into the episode. We gonna bring it to you just like that. Welcome everyone to the future. It's AI chat, bringing you the interviews and giving you info to be in the know. Tech company CEOs of Rock with us. Bet you gonna come back. I'm just saying the facts. This is AI chat. Let's go. Hugging Faces, which is of course the New York City based startup, has just launched a third party customizable um, hugging chat assistant. So, this new product is essentially allowing users to create customizable AI chatbots. Some people are calling this a competitor to OpenAI's custom uh, you know, GPT builder. I like I get where they're coming from on this, but to be honest, I think this is actually a bigger competitor to Quora's Poe, where you're creating like these chatbot tools. And the reason for that is that, uh, you know, I, and maybe this is a little bit of the way that the GPT store goes, but these aren't like, it's not like you're creating uh, an app that you like put some inputs in and it runs and gives you an output, like a, a product or a tool like you'd expect from SaaS. They're still like chatbots. So you're still talking with it to get it to do things. So it's not... So much you're creating tools now. I would, to be honest, I think a lot of the GPTs on the GPT store are like that. Um, and I guess you know people are asking like, what's the point of differentiating? I think the differentiation for me is just what I'm building with AI Box is a bit of a different product, I guess, from all of these. I'm not really building. Well, you can build custom chatbots on it. That's not really the the main concept. Is actually to build like AI tools where you input some stuff or you have it automatically grabbing data and automatically spitting out data to its endpoints um, and automating a workflow. So like my goal is the less you have to chat with this thing, the better, the less you ever have to interface or input with it, uh, the better it should be a system that can, you know, automatically autonomously run itself. So that's more what I'm focused on, whereas these all seem to be things that are more conversational. You know, it's like a conversational is cool and custom and different every time. But if you need to automate workflows that are repetitive, um, that's more what I'm focused on. So I guess that's the, the caveat to what I'll say here. But in any case, um, OpenAI's GPT Builder, obviously, you have to pay a subscription to. Uh, that's something that a lot of people have complained about. You can't use it unless you have uh, ChatGPT Premium, which is like 20 bucks a month, and you get GPT-4 and stuff. And to be honest, a big reason why like, I think that is that like, it actually doesn't even bother me is because like, I don't know if you want to use any of these GPTs or tools if they're not GPT-4 because the results are going to be so much better. But anyways, in... Stark contrast to that, Hugging Chat assistance is free. So Philip Schmidt, um, he's Hugging Face's technical lead and LLM's director. He announced this uh, recently on X in a post. Um, and he said the Hugging Chat assistant essentially differs from OpenAI's tools because it uses a whole bunch of different um, open source LLMs instead of just, you know, chat GPT. So in this regard, I think they're 100% going in the right direction. This is like what I've been saying since uh, early last year with AI Box is that like you do not want to be tied down to just one company. Um, you want to be able to use these open source models. You want to be able to use and swap out different models. So you're literally model agnostic. I think they allow you to use um, a couple different LLMs. They have Mistral's um, AI and then also Meta's Llama 2. Um, and then, of course, they have a bunch of different models and frameworks. So it's pretty much similar to their approach with Hugging Chat and what they're doing there. But what I think is really interesting here is that Hugging Face has introduced an aggregator page for third-party customized Hugging Face chat assistants, which is it pretty much, it looks just like OpenAI's GPT store. Very simple, um, kind of dark color uh, looking page. It's pretty much the, the GPT store. A lot of people are saying, hey, look, they just copied them. But I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you need too much creativity when it comes to, uh, you know, simply selecting. Although these do look quite a bit different than Apple's App Store. So maybe they could have been a little bit different. I don't know. That's not something I'm super worried about. A bunch of users, including um, Matthew Tresio, the founder of Den 
or Gen Dojo. Um, consider hugging chat assistant superior in custom ability and also just the fact that it's free compared to OpenAI's models. Um, so I think this is definitely going to be an interesting competitive landscape. We're going to probably see tens or hundreds of these stores pop up. And then we'll probably see some consolidation around um, a handful of these stores that go after specific segments or target um, specific areas. You know, they'll add the functionality to work in specific niches really well um, or just kind of have different visions. This is going to be really interesting to see where this goes. Um, so the release of Hugging Chat Assistance right now, I think, is just kind of highlighting the the how fast everything is moving in the open source AI community. Um, and, you know, this is a little bit contrasted to some closed systems, but I think this is all super, super exciting. And I'll keep you up to date on how um, this tool is received, what kind of reception it gets, how who's using it. Um, I feel like it might be just because of hugging face and what it is. This might be more of a developer um, focused kind of area, but I'll keep you up to date. And I think this is definitely one that's very interesting to learn more about. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.